Camphor, Wikipedia article audio. Camphor is a waxy, flammable, white, or transparent solid with a strong aroma. It is a terpenoid with the chemical formula C10H16O. It is found in the wood of the camphor laurel, a large evergreen tree found in Asia and also of the unrelated capper tree, a tall timber tree from the same region. It also occurs in some other related trees in the laurel family, notably Ocodia usambarensis. The oil in rosemary leaves, in the mint family, contains 10 to 20 percent camphor, while camphor weed only contains some 5 percent. Camphor can also be synthetically produced from oil of turpentine. It is used for its scent, as an ingredient in cooking, as an embalming fluid, for medicinal purposes, and in religious ceremonies. A major source of camphor in Asia is camphor basil. The molecule has two possible enantiomers as shown in the structural diagrams. The structure on the left is the naturally occurring form, while its mirror image shown on the right is the form. Etymology Production Norcamphor is a camphor derivative with the three methyl groups replaced by hydrogen. The word camphor derives from the French word camphor itself from medieval Latin camphora, from Arabic kafir, ultimately from Sanskrit, slash karpram. Camphor was well known in ancient India during the Vedic period. In Old Malay it is known as kapar barus, which means the chalk of barus. Barus was the name of an ancient port located near modern Sibalga city on the western coast of Sumatra Island. This port traded in camphor extracted from laurel trees that were abundant in the region. Even now, the local tribes people and Indonesians in general refer to aromatic naphthalene balls and moth balls as kapur barus. Camphor was produced as a forest product for millennia, condensed from the vapor given off by the roasting of wood chips cut from the relevant trees. When its uses in the nascent chemical industries greatly increased the volume of demand in the late 19th century, potential for changes in supply and in price followed. In 1911 Robert Kennedy Duncan, an industrial chemist and educator, related that the imperial Japanese government had recently tried to monopolize the production of natural camphor as a forest product in Asia but that the monopoly was prevented by the development of the total synthesis alternatives, which began in purely academic and wholly uncommercial form with Gustav Kempa's first report but it sealed the fate of the Japanese monopoly for no sooner was it accomplished than it excited the Attention of a new army of investigators the industrial chemists. The patent offices of the world were soon crowded with alleged commercial syntheses of camphor, and of the favored processes companies were formed to exploit them, factories resulted, and in the incredibly short time of two years after its academic synthesis artificial camphor, every whit as good as the natural product, entered the markets of the world. 133-134, and yet artificial camphor does not and cannot displace the natural product to an extent sufficient to ruin the camphor growing industry. Its sole present and probable future function is to act as a permanent check to monopolization, to act as a balance wheel to regulate prices within reasonable limits. This ongoing check on price growth was confirmed in 1942 in a monograph on DuPont's history, where William S. Dutton said, indispensable in the manufacture of pyroxylin plastics, natural camphor imported from Formosa and selling normally for about 50 cents a pound, reached the high price of $3.75 in 1918. The organic chemists had replied by synthesizing camphor from the turpentine of southern pine stumps, 
with the result that the price of industrial camphor sold in carload lots in 1939 was between 32 cents and 35 cents a pound. 293. The background of Gustav Kempa's synthesis was as follows. In the 19th century, it was known that nitric acid oxidizes camphor into camphoric acid. Haller and Blanc published a semi-synthesis of camphor from camphoric acid. Although they demonstrated its structure, they were unable to prove it. The first complete total synthesis of camphoric acid was published by Kempa in 1903. Its inputs were diethyl oxalate and 3,3-dimethylpentanoic acid, which reacted by clase and condensation to yield dictocamphoric acid. Methylation with methyl iodide and a complicated reduction procedure produced camphoric acid. William Perkin published another synthesis a short time later. Previously, some organic compounds had been synthesized in the laboratory as a proof of concept, but camphor was a scarce natural product with a worldwide demand. Kemp realized this. He began industrial production of camphor in Tanyankoski, Finland, in 1907. Camphor can be produced from alpha-pinene, which is abundant in the oils of coniferous trees and can be distilled from turpentine produced as a side product of chemical pulping. With acetic acid as the solvent and with catalysis by a strong acid, alpha-pinene readily rearranges into campane, which in turn undergoes wagner meerwein rearrangement into the isobornal cation, which is captured by acetate to give isobornal acetate. Hydrolysis into isobornial followed by oxidation gives racemic camphor. By contrast, camphor occurs naturally as D-camphor, the enantiomer. Biosynthesis In biosynthesis, camphor is produced from geranyl pyrophosphate, via cyclization of linaloyl pyrophosphate to bornal pyrophosphate followed by hydrolysis to borneal and oxidation to camphor. Typical camphor reactions are Reactions Camphor can also be reduced to isoborneal using sodium borohydride. In 1998, K. Chakrabarty and co-workers from the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science, Kolkata, prepared diamond thin film using camphor as the precursor for chemical vapor deposition. In 2007, carbon nanotubes were successfully synthesized using camphor in chemical vapor deposition process. Physical Uses The sublimating capability of camphor gives it several uses. Explosives Camphor is used as a plasticizer for nitrocellulose, an ingredient for fireworks and explosive munitions. During the late 19th century, as Western manufacturers developed machine guns and other rapid-fire ordnance, it became imperative to reduce the smoke that obscured battlefields and revealed hidden gun emplacements. Camphor was an essential component in the production of smokeless gunpowder. Also, the new smokeless powder did not foul the weapons as much as conventional gunpowder. Nitrocellulose Plastics Closely related chemically to the explosives uses are the uses in nitrocellulose plastics. In the early decades of the plastics industry, camphor was used in immense quantities. 130 in the making of such plastics, including celluloid and pyroxylin lacquers, and of explosives. It was in this connection that the development of a synthetic source became economically important, as discussed above. Camphor is believed to be toxic to insects and is thus sometimes used as a repellent. Camphor is used as an alternative to mothballs. 
Camphor crystals are sometimes used to prevent damage to insect collections by other small insects. It is kept in clothes used on special occasions and festivals, and also in cupboard corners as a cockroach repellent. Pest deterrent and preservative Camphor is also used as an antimicrobial substance. In embalming, Camphor oil was one of the ingredients used by ancient Egyptians for mummification. Solid camphor releases fumes that form a rust preventative coating and is therefore stored in tool chests to protect tools against rust. In ancient and medieval Europe, camphor was used as an ingredient in sweets. It was used in a wide variety of both savory and sweet dishes in medieval Arabic language cookbooks such as Al-Kitab al-Abiq compiled by Ibn Sayyar al-Warak in the 10th century, and an anonymous Andalusian cookbook of the 13th century. It also appears in sweet and savory dishes in the Ni Matnama, a book written in the late 15th century for the sultans of Mandu. An early international trade in it made camphor widely known throughout Arabia in pre-Islamic times as it is mentioned in the Quran 76,5 as a flavoring for drinks. By the 13th century, it was used in recipes everywhere in the Muslim world, ranging from main dishes such as thurid and stew to desserts. Currently, alcohol analog of camphor, also known as isoborneal, is used as a flavoring, mostly for sweets, in Asia. It is widely used in cooking, mainly for dessert dishes, in India where it is known as Kishakar Poram or Pakakar Pora, in and is available in Indian grocery stores where it is labeled as edible camphor. Camphor is readily absorbed through the skin, where it stimulates nerve endings sensitive to heat and cold, producing a warm sensation when vigorously applied or a cool sensation when applied gently. These effects are particularly noticeable in the lungs and airways if camphor is inhaled as an aerosol. The action on nerve endings also induces a slight local analgesia. Culinary Uses The sensation of heat that camphor produces on the skin is presumably due to activation of the ion channels TRPV3 and TRPV1 while the cool sensation due to activation of TRPM8. Medicinal Uses The global effects on the body include tachycardia, vasodilation in skin, slower breathing, reduced appetite, and increased secretions and excretions such as perspiration and urination. Bromination Camphor is toxic in large doses. It produces symptoms of irritability, disorientation, lethargy, muscle spasms, vomiting, abdominal cramps, convulsions, and seizures. Lethal doses in adults are in the range 5500 mg slash kg. Generally, 2 grams cause serious toxicity and 4 grams are potentially lethal. Camphor has been used in traditional medicine from time immemorial in countries where it was native. It was probably the odor of the substance and its decongestant effect that led to its use in medicine. Camphor was used in ancient Sumatra to treat sprains, swellings, and inflammation. Physiology Traditional Uses Modern Uses Regulation It has long been used as a medical substance in ancient India, where it generally goes by the name Karpra. It has been described in the 7th century Ayurvedic work Mthavasi kits as being an effective drug used for the treatment of fever. The plant has also been named Hima and has been identified with the plant Cinnamomum camphora. According to the Vedyaka Sabda Sindhu, it is one of the five flavors used in beetle chewing, where it is also referred to as candrabasma. 
Camphor also was used for centuries in Chinese medicine for a variety of purposes. Camphor was a component of paragoric, an opium-slash-camphor tincture developed in the 18th century. Paragoric was used in various formulations for hundreds of years. It was a household remedy in the 18th and 19th centuries when it was widely used to control diarrhea in adults and children, as an expectorant and cough medicine, to calm fretful children, and to rub on the gums to counteract the pain from teething. Its use declined in the 20th century after the regulation of opium. Also in the 18th century, Camphor was used by Ian Brugger in the treatment of mania, paradoxically by inducing seizures. Based on Hahnemann S. writings, camphor was successfully used in the 19th century to treat the 1854-1855 cholera epidemics in Naples. In the 20th century, camphor was administered orally in small quantities for minor heart symptoms and fatigue. This preparation was sold under the trade name Musterol, production ceased in the 1990s. Today the main use of camphor is as a cough suppressant and as a decongestant. It is an active ingredient in vapor steam decongestant products, such as Vicks VapoRub. Hindu Religious Ceremonies In 1980, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration set a limit of 11% allowable camphor in consumer products, and banned products labeled as camphorated oil, camphor oil, camphor liniment, and camphorated liniment. Since alternative treatments exist, medicinal use of camphor is discouraged by the FDA, except for skin-related uses, such as medicated powders, which contain only small amounts of camphor. Camphor is widely used in Hindu religious ceremonies. It is put on a stand called Karpurdini in India. Ardi is performed after setting fire to it usually as the last step of puja.